Warm, friendly hellos. Welcome to the first allocator call taking place for the Phil Plus program on October 15th. Let's take a look at the agenda. On this call, we're going to start with an update to the FDS. That's the Filecoin Developer Summit taking place in Bangkok, second week of Feb November. We'll give you the dates, tell you what to expect a little bit. And we're also asking if anybody from the community will be there. The highlights of the call are two points. Point number one is the inactive allocators. So this is issue 180. We'll talk about who that impacts, thank the folks that have provided updates, and kind of provide some clarification on why this is taking place and how it will help everybody else involved. Then the other part of the call is anybody who's wishing to join the program. Right now, it's been a rolling application period. For over the last 16 weeks, organizations have been filing applications to join with a sharp uptick in September. So we wanted to make sure that those applications received feedback and then broadcast to the community what we're seeing in those applications as we go forward. For community discussions on this call, not a lot of new activity, but I saw we had an application from, I think it's IPFS CT, who wished to discuss that. So if you're on the call, we'll be happy to pull up that and look. And as always, if there's anything that you want to see on this call, I'll make an issue in GitHub and anything you want on the agenda, our time, we can do whatever you need. All right, so with that, today is October 15th. Next call will be taking place on the 29th of October. Then please see those dates in red. They were all updated because of the FDS. So we shifted this call back to the 12th of November after FDS, then you won't have it again until November, excuse me, December. So the calendar is updated, but if you follow it any other way, make sure you update your records. And the second call today will be taking place at 0200. All right, check in on metrics. So every two weeks, we take a look at what's been going on with the program in that time. Is it growing? Is it contracting? Are we seeing any trends? And we're really baseline for the last probably three months. And what we're seeing on average is around 20 clients. And this two-week period is no exception. And we saw 46 PIBs go out from those deals. So we're still averaging around, gosh, a PIB, two PIBs for each one of these deals. And that's 63 active allocators. So we'll come back to this 63 number quite a few times on the call. But what you can see is there was 84 allocators onboarded, and we're seeing about 20 of them that really have no activity. We're seeing activity from these 63. So how do we help the 63 the most is one of the pressing issues facing the government's team. All right. Hey, Bangkok, if anybody's going to be in the area, love, love to see you. Shake your hand, hear about your award, learn what the foundation can do to better support. The FDS is taking place from November 6th through the 8th. It's at a great location, center of Bangkok. I've never been, so if you have any food recommendations, let me know. But on November 7th, from 1530 to 1800, that's when the Phil Plus talks are going to happen. Right now at a high level, there's four sessions. They're meant to be working groups, not just podium style lectures, but working groups on these four topics. What's the state of Phil Plus? What's working? What could be improved? What are we taking away from the community? How are we helping to get the data on board as effective and quickly as possible? There's an allocator highlight section. So there's some great pathways doing some great things. We want to make sure to highlight those success stories, let them be a case for any new allocators that want to join the program. They can look at those that have a really successful model and kind of learn from it. So I've reached out to some. If you're on this call and you're going to be there live, you'll see that little thought balloon and a happy little yellow there. Love, love to have you. We can give you a few minutes to talk about your org, some of your lessons learned as you go through it. So if you were coming to FDS, love to have you live, not just coming to these sessions, but if you want to highlight and get some high fives, please let me know and I'll put you on the schedule. The last two sessions are macroeconomics and data cap. There's talks of running test nets on mainnet, on looking at the, the finances. Is it a 10X multiplier? How do we drop those? So as we start to look at this new program going forward into 2025, 2024 was very much a establish the roots of each individual organization receiving their own data cap versus one big pool. Now the next part is how do we make that more effective now that the engineering aspects are coming into line, it's much more stable. And then the last is pathway iteration. Right now we have mostly manual operations taking place. But once we get a few of these automated pathways, either market-based or, you know, goodness, GitHub verification, whatever it may be, how can that change the dynamics and we support those manual allocators and get something new as it goes through? So again, the November 7th is the talks, going to have it. 
me check chat because I see some things going on over there and I'll make sure I get all your questions on topic. I see Galen, how much spice, <laughs> never enough spice, buddy. And uh, the links to the meeting, Eric, yeah, it looks like Alan already got you. I put it in chat before you joined the, the call. And then Eric, does uh, Phil Plus Day will hold in Thai meeting? If you're wondering about the language of use, I think for these, the baseline will be English. If there is the request of like having some type of translation service, I know right now we're still in talks with the venue and the audio, if this is going to be recorded. I doubt that it will be live streamed, but if it's recorded and then we have that hosted, I can always put on YouTube with auto-generated captions. But I believe this is asking what language will it be in, which will be English. Any clarifications, let us know. We'll get to whatever you need, Eric. Thanks for that. All right. Hey, allocator activity. So some of the names on the call, I don't know if this impacts you. If it does, please unmute. We'll go through it. So here's what's going on. The foundation has been working on updates to the fill.org landing page. This comes from feedback from clients. And some of the clients were saying when they're new to the storage ecosystem, when they came to the fill.org fill plus page to learn about it, all of the information was tailored to allocators, running a successful pathway, diligence reviews, retrieval, that sort of thing. But there wasn't a lot of information on how a client could apply receive data cap, and then connect with an allocator to make that transaction. So there's two reasons why we're looking at sunsetting some of these inactive allocators. The first is obviously diligence and abuse. If you have an organization that's sitting on petabytes and petabytes of data, and then for whatever reason, they get compromised or just leave the program in bad standing, they can make those distributions quite easily. So that's number one. And number two is that when a client does come to this page and searches for an allocator, we want to give them allocators that can provide that deal in a timely and effective way. Not an allocator that's still working on a pathway that will be ready in six months to a year or has no idea how to do a manual because they've never done it before. And they put that client in a tricky spot with diligence validations. So the purpose of this is not to remove allocators who are doing good work and want to be in standing. It's just to remove those allocators that might have become inactive for whatever reason and are no longer connected with the program. So we did this before, back in June, we looked at everybody in Q2 who had no activity and we removed seven allocators that either had no pathway that was set up or they had no activity responding back if they wanted to remain inactive. So we're doing the same thing now for Q3. So if you look at this graph, you'll see that there was 84 allocators, but only 63 are active. And of those 63, we have 55 manual pathways. So 55 options where a client can reach out to any one of these and request data cap. We have two market-based and we have five automated allocator pathways. So really the goal is to support the 55, two and five to get their processes great to go and make sure that anyone's not gonna be on that it's taken care of. So on the last talk we had, these were the 16, as of November 1st, two weeks ago, organizations that we either had not seen a deal done or no updates on how their pathway was going to operate and get launched. So I reached out to all of you. Thank you so much for writing back. If your name is crossed off this list, it's because you've either started deal distributions or you've reached out and said, hey, we're in the final stages. We're going to launch our MVP on X date. We're looking for tactics. If you look at this list, the majority of this is manual allocators. So these are people that just had to start reviewing, either bringing their own clients or connecting with clients. So thank you. If your name is lined off, you are good to go. We have what we need. We're looking forward to great things. So these were the miners that we have cleared off. So these are all good to go. So if your name's on this list, thank you. Some of the reasons why some was not making transactions, there was a technical issue or they're now starting on their automated pathway, or they began their deal making. So again, if you're on this list here, you're all set, no further action. These four individuals we have not heard back from. So in the allocator working channel on Slack, I've tagged these four organizations. So if you're watching this now because you're tagged, here's what you have to do. Please leave a comment in issue 180. It could say like, hey, I'm Kevin, I'm from Nebula. We've been working on our automated pathway. Here is all of the documentation. Here is a link where you could see our MVP. Here is something. 
at one year post data cap, what we're not looking for is like, yes, it should be up soon. Really vague terms like that make it hard, not just for governance, but we don't know if we should route clients to you and when we're going to do that. So be very specific. And for the manual applications, it could be as simple as, yes, we were waiting for our clients. They didn't come. Now we're starting it. So we want to see some activity from those manual clients by the end of next week. If that next week turnaround is tough, maybe someone's on vacation, maybe you're still working with a client that's not quite ready. We're trying to make this as supportive and helpful as possible. The intent is to not remove folks that still want to do good work. So please leave an update in that proposal. Just say, yes, we're going to be onboarding these clients in mid-November and we'll be all set with that. So all you have to do is leave that comment. We'll get it set. I'm going to check chat and see if there's anything on that. All right, nothing on topic. If anything comes up, please let us know. So for those four organizations that we haven't heard back, just to reiterate what we talked about in the proposal, we're giving you until the end of next Monday just to say, hey, here's where I stand. This is what's going on. I've started deals or I'm going to be starting on this. Please provide that by the 21st. On the 22nd, what we'll do is we'll update the proposal with any organizations we have not heard back. We will leave them in the allocator Slack channel, but we will sunset their data cap and they will no longer be listed on the allocator directory. So no clients will be able to find them and work with them because they won't have data cap to go through. They're very welcome to come back, reapply. If it's a great application, really simple to get them back and get that data cap back. But again, the goal of this is any allocators that are holding data cap and are working with public clients should be available for public clients. If you're not ready for that, then you're not ready to be an allocator. Keep working on the tooling, come back when it's ready, and we'll happily onboard you. All right. And then as far as onboarding you, let's talk about allocator applications for organizations that are wishing to join. So at a very high level, over the last maybe 12 to 14 weeks, we've had what's called a rolling application period. So those of you that have been around Phil Plus in the past, you remember that once a year, we collected those applications. A little bit different. This time, we just let them come in. And what's been nice is that over those weeks, we could start to see patterns emerge. What questions were not being answered? What do some of those applications look like? The big thing that we've seen in these 27 applications is we have a high concentration of manual, and we have a high concentration of automated and market-based. So I'm going to dive into each one of those applications here, kind of talk about them, and make a call that if you are an organization wishing to join, here are specific things that we recommend you do to strengthen your application. So first, it's the manual. So everybody listed here from a &E College down to X-Man team have provided information that they want to set up a new manual pathway. So there are already 55 manual pathways that are available for clients. So the need and benefit to the network to onboard additional manual pathways is not there. In fact, it's a negative because it requires more diligence, more onboarding, more upkeep to go through. So we're really looking at anybody who's trying to join the program should benefit the program. It shouldn't just be for their own needs. How are you benefiting the program? And so what we're asking these manual applicants to do is demonstrate their ability. Many of the manual applications claimed, hey, I have existing clients, they're ready to go with data. Once I spin up, I can do that. Love it, love it, love it. Here's how you can demonstrate that. If you are applying to be a manual pathway and you have existing clients, this is your chance to show the community and the governance team that those clients are real and that you can maintain the standards of your application. So in each one of the applications, Galen or myself left a comment saying, hey, take one of those clients that's working with you and bring it to an existing pathway. We recommend either the Fiddles Enterprise pathway, very clear, very established, lots of support, but whatever pathway you want. And then you should be able to then come back to this issue after you've done so. And I've linked here in the screenshot below what you should share. Who was the client that you brought to the allocator? What was the client's ID? What was the bookkeeping process? Did they maintain the SPs that they said they would? Did they offer retrieval that they said they would? If not, why? What did you do working with them? If so, 
great. You're establishing that this is a repeatable process and not just an allocator that's doing the exact same manual thing, working with unknown clients. So this is the ask for any manual applications that wish to move forward. We need to see some type of reputation and demonstrated ability to add benefit to the network, not just grow 55 to 65 to 75, where we don't have a lot of value for that work. And again, we are trying to prioritize applications that are doing something new, make it faster for the client, make it easier for the community. So these would be novel approaches like building an automation system, a market-based, or even a meta pathway that comes through. So this RFA went out in April. It was published in a blog by Fiddle. And we've referenced it many times on the call. So the next thing that I noticed was a lot of the applications for market and automated were just manual. They're just describing a manual review where somebody submits an application, somebody looks at the application and comes back. It's just manual, just wrapped around the RFA of automated or market. So if you're building a market-based or an automated pathway, you should have an MVP. You should have a website. You should have a monetization schedule. If not, then these are the things that you should work on and collect before that goes through into scoring. So again, this feedback was left on all of the applications that encountered this. So this is Fun Club for both your GitHub and social media, Laugh Storage for your client staking, TimeQuant, CMay, RivTower. CMay, you came to the last call on October 1st. Thank you. Please sharing that so it's public and staking it is exactly what we're looking for. With these, what we wanna see is really clear descriptions on how this allocator pathway will run. I've noticed, and one of the trends I saw, is that we'll see a lot of this kind of like word salad, almost like ChatGPT wrote it without any kind of, I'm gonna build an ecosystem, we're gonna data steward and high quality data sets. That doesn't say anything. If you're setting up a GitHub, how does the GitHub pull? Does the account have to be on GitHub for 30 days? Kind of like Glyphs was. Do you have any requirements? When we don't see this description, it tells us that this is an applicant who doesn't have this pathway, but would still like access to the data cap. And it's almost like falling into that manual trap. So if you submitted an application for an automated tooling, a lot of the feedback was, tell us about how the on-chain and off-chain prices is tracked. Tell us about a description. What is this clearly doing? Show us an MVP or the build on it. And then that way it can get you through. Because without that, there's really no way to say if this is going to work in the program or even if it exists. And same thing with market-based applications. So TimeQuant, CyberHash, Top Value, Wuhan, Coffee Club, Windmill, CMA again, Datafly, and Akave. If you have a market-based, it should clearly spell out where does the market operate? How do people find it? How are deals matched? How is this different from a manual application? Because again, in reading many of these market-based, they're great initial thoughts. Like I wanna get involved, I wanna do this. But a lot of these market applications don't actually describe, share, or provide context of how this market will actually operate, which makes it really difficult to score it. So if there's no information on that, please provide it. So again, I've left comments or Galen's left comments in each one of these issues. This will be next step. If we don't hear back from this, we'll just assume that this is a manual application. If you want to work on developing that market and reapply and just reopen it when it's ready, love that. Galen, I see your hand. I'll pass it over to you to kind of carry forward. Yes, uh, thanks. I think Carrie was like just touching on this. Um, you know, we saw a number of applications where they would say, we have this idea, we're building this platform, we're building the market, but it's, you know, going to take longer. And in the meantime, we're going to do manual diligence. Um, that is a manual pathway. If you're applying to do a manual pathway. So just submit that application. And then when you are ready to do a market or an automated or you know, respond to one of the RFAs, submit that as another application. And again, all of this is transparency, building trust over time, creating these discrete and distinct pathways. Um, we have teams that have you know, two, we have some teams that have three pathways that they run. And those pathways are meant to be discrete 
from one another. So if you're building something and we acknowledge that some of these automated systems take longer, um, submit that application for what it is and submit another one saying, we're gonna do manual in the meantime. But again, all of those manual pathways, we have a lot that exist. We want to see those teams go, you know, demonstrate that they have these clients, that they know how to work with these clients, that they can support these clients. Um, and that they can take them through any of the other 50 manual allocator pathways. Um, as you was saying, the more of these teams that we add, it just increases all of the overhead for all of these different teams. It increases you know, the number of team names listed on the discovery pages, which increases confusion for new clients about who should I be applying to, how do we know which one, is a good fit. It increases the amount of tooling time for all of us onboarding them. Every time there's a JSON file change, every time somebody needs to update their, um, you know, multi-sig address, but then also every time there's a compliance review, you know, these things, there's a minimal economy of scale here by adding more of these teams. Um, so, you know, other ways that, People can show up and increase kind of the reputation in the ecosystem is proposing, developing, you know, new tooling, launching new tools. Some of, we've seen some um, work on this front with new retrieval bots. Um, we're excited to look at those. But specifically with some of these market-based ones, if there are claims that there is going to be on-chain payment, or that this is an enterprise deal, or that it's a fee-based system then let's see a bot that's going to track and report. It could report in each GitHub issue, uh, kind of like how the CID checker bot runs. There could be another dashboard. We have various APIs that have been made. We have, you know, the Fiddle team has been working on creating more and new um, dashboards and bots and reports. You know, if you're proposing a market-based system that says clients are going to stake an amount of money or SPs are going to bid on these deals, let's see templates for what those smart contracts look like. Let's see, you know, bots that start to track it. Um, make those proposals, do some of that tooling development that's also going to significantly improve kind of the you know, overall efficiency of the program, but also just how these different pathways can be more discrete um, and how we can get further away from the manual pathways. I think that there will always be a good time and place for these manual pathways. But I, I think personally, from looking at kind of the landscape and where we've been, you know, across like three years and where we want to go, we want more of the systems supporting the Filecoin ecosystem to be either automated or market-based um, so that you can get everything from small-scale individuals to developers to very large enterprise clients, and you can put them through a right size process and pathway. You know, the very slow manual pathway is not really the best for small scale developers. Um, it would make a lot, a lot more deal making. You know, continues to, to what they said. If their uh, their behavior, if the fee price. It says unstable connection, just like me. Galen, we're having some mic. We got the first bolt, but maybe the last minute, it seems like the line is starting to lag. 
I see your video off. Whenever you want to come back, just let me know if that comes. I'll give you a thumbs up. So put sampling on what Galen was saying. These should be ready to go. You should be working on the tooling. Apply when it's ready, not that this is the intent to build. Ideally, when these applications are coming in, it's you're ready to be onboarded and the pathway is ready to operate. It should have an MVP. It should have clearly defined steps. If not, work on that. We'll close the application and then just reopen it when it's all said and we can look at that and go forward. Because right now, without those details, they would just be a Randy Jackson, which is a no. So <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about how these are looked at. So in the V3 and V4, we had this rubric and it was great because you as an allocator organization could look at the rubric and say, does my application kind of meet the baseline going forward? In the past, we would score these, but now going forward, we're just gonna compare it to the viability of other allocators that are operating since we have this group of 63 allocators. So if it's a manual allocator, it'll be held to the standards of not only its application, but those other 53 manuals. And same thing for the market-based and same thing for the automated pathways. The biggest feedback that I left in these issues and that I would share with the community are these points right here is the allocator description. This should be very, very clear. How will the pathway run? How will clients find it? And what are the inner workings of it? And then how will diligence be performed? So many times on the market and automated, it was just a manual review. So if it's an automated pathway, it should spell out that this bot is running or this verification of on-chain payment was completed. It shouldn't have to allocate that manual. If it's a manual, it's a very different pathway, but for a market and automated, it should be spelt out. This should have lots and lots of information on how that's conducted. And then I saw a lot on the third-party tooling for diligence checks. A lot of organizations just said, I'll use a third-party tool. If you're to the stage where you're ready to begin making deals and you've been awarded this, you should be able to list what that tool is. Just saying I'm using a third-party tooling, you're saying that I haven't explored it, I haven't found this option. And then when this comes through and you get your data cap, we're going to have no way of knowing what that tooling was, what was it authorized for. So you should spell out, if you say I'm using a third-party software, what is the software? Is it Synapse? Is it Toggle? Is it something else that you may have done? and we're looking for the specifics on what that software will be used. The next is monetization and fees. So if you're a manual pathway, maybe you charge for deals, maybe you don't. If you are an automated tooling or a market-based, how are you verifying those distributions on chain? Is it on-chain payment, is it off? Is there a website that lists it? This should be very clearly spelled out. We've provided a couple of examples for past ones that did this really well. If you wanna see how they spelled it out and going forward, and then the last one is just the diligence. Only a manual pathway should be using that manual process. If your tooling isn't there, then you should, again, be looking at a manual pathway, not setting up this brand new automated pathway that can't operate. Because again, coming back, when clients see this list of allocators, it should be actionable allocators that are ready to perform and their tooling is stood up to be onboarding. Anything that's waiting needs to flush that out and get it more set up. So again, this rubric is linked in the application, in this slide deck, in the comments. Feel free to take a look. It's a really helpful guiding post on what may be missing and what more details you could provide. So I'll pause and see if anybody has any questions on new applications. All right. Data cap refresh. So this has been an ongoing challenge. And the challenge really is, how are we ensuring that there's a timely refill of a lot of these great allocators that are performing while still maintaining the diligence standards set up of the application? What we saw is some applications said they would have five replicas, no CID sharing, the retrieval would be off the charts high. And when they start making their distributions, there's non-retrievable data. The SPs are different. The VPN makes it really tricky to go through. There's no comms back to the client. And so we've been doing this onesie twosie for these first two or three rounds. And it was a lot of feedback. So if you were an organization and you got the application review, you may have seen that there was a watchdog or community that gives a lot of like, here were the hard numbers. 
And then there was a comment from Galen kind of analyzing the two. Here were the hard numbers. Here's what we saw. And here's what you have to do to maintain it. The time slowdown for the second and third distributions of these diligence is looking at all those past performance. So if we have somebody that was flagged for no retrieval in their first round, they said they would improve. Then we have to look at not just the second round refresh, but the first. So it's a lot of manual process going through that. And on the call, I'll highlight who that's impacting, what are next steps, and then how we're trying to make this faster for everyone involved. So in round five, we completed these refresh grants for these individuals. We shared this on the last call. If you have any complications, let us go, but the data cap should be refreshed to your multi-sig and you're all set. There are 16 organizations that are currently awaiting that finalization from the governance team. This is what we've seen. This is what is resulting in you being throttled, doubled, or having it cut all together. So check back. You'll notice that I'll tag these with diligence audit in process. This lets you know that this is awaiting that finalization from the government, looking at all the facts as it goes through. I'll pause. Galen, I see your hand. The floor is yours. Yes, I'm back. Sorry. So sorry. On a hotspot. Let's see if this works. Um, 15 uh, compliance reviews were completed uh, and pushed to root key holders as of yesterday. Um, so those were like number compliance review numbers 148 kind of through 186. I think there were um, two uh, on one of my lists that were still getting further investigation um, that either came in last week or were not a manual pathway and needing more um, investigation. So a lot of those already got pushed to root key holders. Uh, we should see root key holder signatures in the next um, couple of days uh, for those data cap um, refreshes. Yes, raise the roof. The pigs <laughs> will flow. That's how you know you got an uncool dad on the call. Still got the raise the roof motions. That's good news. Thank you so much for that, Galen. One of the things that I was looking at when I was talking with some of you about this, it's the kind of back and forth. An allocator organization makes an issue. They list some of the facts that are seen in others. They wait for the watchdog, then they leave comments, and then they wait for the governance team to leave comments, and then they wait for the root key holder to sign it. So we're looking at steps that we can do to make this process a lot faster. And I think one of the things that I've gotten feedback on is having a template that really collects what's important and having the allocators self-select. So right now it's in the registry. I'm going to port it over to the governance tomorrow. And what this is, is a new issue template for a data cap refresh in the governance. So when you fill this out as an allocator, it'll take a little bit more time. So probably about 15 to 30 minutes for you to collect all this and share it. And what you'll be doing is listing, hey, in my first refresh, I received five petabytes. And my feedback was I had to get my Spark retrieval scores up. In my second application, I received five petabytes and I had to have Spark that was greater than 20 or describe why the VPNs were being used. This will have the allocators self-select and self-provide where they stand. In it. So when it comes time for the watchdog to look at this, the watchdog is just verifying the numbers that the allocator has lined out. And rather than being collecting all of that while we wait for you to leave a comment, the watchdog is verifying. So we're hoping to cut some time off that. This also makes it easier for the governance team to look back and really holistically see how this allocator pathway is operated, not just in this last tranche of data cap, but how have they been conducting this business over the course of their data cap received. So the pros is that this will greatly reduce the amount of time for back and forth between all members to communicate, perform their diligence, and get the root key holders what they need. The cons are when you file this template, you will be providing a lot of this information. There's links on where to grab it, and you will be self-describing if you met that diligence standards. And if you fell short, you would self-describe what will be different in going forward in order to receive that. So a little bit of a longer on the template, but we'll save days on the back and forth. So when this launches tomorrow, I'll make a post in the allocator channel so we can all see it and track it and be aware. 
And again, this should greatly reduce the back and forth between all these parties communicating and looking at this holistically. Dalen, yes. Um, just in. Oh, wait, can you hear me? I'm good. Okay. Uh, some of these recent ones, there was one team in particular, I think, that did a uh, really great job of some of this of like showcasing themselves, what they did well, where they had issues, what they were focusing on going forward. Um, the watchdog would comment and they quickly like responded. There were some other allocators that literally opened an issue and said, we have used our data cap and we would like more. Thank you. But like that is not a that that's not a justification. Like that's you know sure. Thanks for the update. Um, but you know help us make these go faster and help present the evidence um, and show us what you are planning to work on um, and how you're improving. Um, so we've seen some also more examples of an allocator intervening and saying. I gave some, I gave a first allocation to this client. This is how they used it. I checked the tracker. I did, you know, further diligence. They were not compliant. I closed their issue and told them, you know, they need to show these kinds of improvement or go like work with another um, team. That's great. We don't want to see evidence of that after the third, fourth, fifth allocation when this person already has, you know, four PIBs of data cap and you're only just now doing an intervention and saying, oh, well, I gave them four and a half PIBs out of my five. And then I realized that they were not compliant. So I closed their application. You know, it shouldn't take that long and you shouldn't put that much of, to, to use the saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you're an allocator and you give so much of your data cap to a single client um, and then that client is not following your rules, you know, again, you're the one on the hook for holding these people accountable. We can only hold the allocators accountable. So jump in after that first or second allocation. Don't wait until the fourth. And if the first and second, you know, look okay, but not great, you can change the amount of data cap that you're going to give them. Just provide that evidence and justification. You know, normally my allocation schedule would be 512 TIBs at this point. I'm not seeing great field distribution. I'm seeing some duplicate data. I'm not seeing Spark scores improving yet. Uh, we haven't completed this KYB check. I'm only going to give you, you know, 256 TIBs while we check this. Please go find some additional storage providers. Um, things like that. Also, at this point, you know. Spark has been out for a while. I know there were some there were some activation hurdles of getting that working. We are now seeing some SPs that are consistently scoring, you know, in the ninety percent um, retrieval rating. We're seeing lots of of clients and allocators that are getting SPs that are over seventy five percent, you know, on average. That's great. Let's you know, direct clients to those highly performant storage providers that are working well. So if you're an allocator and you have these good project partners um, as storage providers, help showcase that, help drive additional traffic to them. If you're a client or an allocator looking for these good ones, go look at some of these compliance interviews, go check some of these dashboards, um, go find some of these SPs and work together. And that is another thing that we would love to see when we're doing these compliance reviews of adding more trust, or reputation, showing evidence of, you know, I got a request from this other client or this other allocator team. Here's how I helped them. You know, here's how I'm increasing the utility of the entire Filecoin ecosystem. It doesn't have to just be, I gave data cap, that data cap landed in a deal. There are lots of ways that these pathways can be adding value. So again, help us complete these reviews faster by telling the story of how you're increasing the utility of Filecoin. Well said, well said. There's a refresh, we've left this slide up, but it's just helpful to come back to, please, when you're looking at this, 
these are the things that we're looking at, is that you're ensuring compliance with your clients. As Galen said, if you're waiting until five PEBs have gone out and then you're saying, oh, well, the client didn't do anything, that's, that's your responsibility. That's why you're given the data cap as an allocator to check these things. So if you're just now finding it during the diligence review, that will result in either throttling or removal as it goes through it. Approving duplicate, we saw this with a pathway that might have two. Be sure that you're only approving one as it goes through. You're verifying those SP's locations. If it's VPN, it's clearly accounted for. And that those bookkeeping fields have information. If we see a bookkeeping application, everything is blank except for the data cap request. It's very clear there was no diligence. We can't verify a KYC. We'll push back on those. And as Galen mentioned, now that we're refreshing on the second, third, and fourth, we kind of have a pattern of what we're seeing. We're going to be much more stringent with these. So a lot of the expectations that were lenient in the first are beginning to solidify. And we're making sure that the allocators who are on board are performing as they said they would. So if you have issues or complications, please put that. We'll help you unblock any tech things. But other than that, the allocators do have a responsibility to maintain those standards. And that's what the watchdog and diligence checks are just looking to keep as it goes forward. All right. And then as far as like new proposals and updates, I just have one that the floor is yours for anything that might be on your mind. We're doing a lot of updates to the fill.org site. So for fill plus, you'll see a lot of changes. We are working with some of the members of the Marcom team. It's an internal team located to the foundation. And what they're looking to do is build biographies around each one of these allocator pathways. It's two parts. One, help highlight you and the contributions that you make to the ecosystem. So you could highlight this put wins, help expand your brand. And the second is as new clients come on and as we grow this network to take on a lot of these like stable two parties that we run on web 2.0, it's we really have to have a good ecosystem of who the players are in this. So you might be contacted in the coming days or weeks by a gentleman named Matt, and we're gonna be building this card base out on who's your org, how does it work? What are some of the highlights? and make it a lot easier for clients to find you and bring their data cap to you to have stored on the network. So you should see this request for bios coming shortly from them. So with that, I'll turn it over. Anything on your mind, the floor is completely yours. Yeah, Bingzu, I see your hand, the floor is yours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Galen. Uh, I'm Bing Zhou, and you can call me Zhou. I'm from the top pool. So I'd like to use this opportunity to elaborate on the distribution of IPFS TT 20P. So we have used 80% of the 20P. So our team uphold uh, the three core uh, principles I would like to share. Uh, the number, number one is uh, we prioritize our working with enterprise customer rather than relying solely on the public available data. So number two, we, uh, we will no longer sign for our customers when they are non-compliant. For example, the CID sharing, uh, storing the duplicated data and et cetera. And also we reject the customers who do not support Spark because we only work with customers who support Spark and we are committed to improving the retrieval data rate of the Spark. And uh, due to the recent uh, rise of the gas, so many SPs have adopted the, the DDO solution, but the DDO doesn't support a Spark as a result. We started turning away the DDO customers uh, two months ago. And we believe that uh, despite the losing some non-compliant customers, we must now lose the trust placed in us by our governance team. So in total, we have worked uh, uh, with nine customers and 50 SPs in the 20 uh, P allocation. So all of which support Spark and four of them are enterprise customers. So we value these enterprise customers with more technical guidance and uh, also some kind of tolerance. So in the future, we will also work uh, to introduce the more enterprise customers to the Falcon networks. So due to the customer network and the equipment relocation, et cetera, the Spark retrieval rate of some SP uh, fluctuated 
greatly. So our team uh, responded quickly to help the customer to solve their problems and successfully fix the Spark retrieval rate for these customers. So we have been involving in the Falcon network for three years. And uh, in these three years, we have helped more than 40 customers and 200 SPs globally. And uh, we worked hard to promote the decentralized data storage. And uh, the SP we worked with, uh, which are located in US, Singapore, UK, Vietnam, Hong Kong, and also mainland China. So some LDNs has SP mainly on the mainland China, and while other SP are distributed in US and Singapore. So as a di distributor, we proactively reach to our customers to provide the multi-region data story solutions and to ensure that each LDN had SPs in multiple regions. So next, we will focus on finding the more enterprise customers and uh, focusing on their technical solutions and even downloading and decompressing the CR files to ensure that the DCs are not abused so finally, uh, thank you for your time and please feel free to contact us with more questions. Thank you. I, I just wanted I had a quick question I wanted to clarify. Was this, um, were you from top pool, um, top up number 150 or was this IPFS TT top up 187? Karen, one, I put that in the chat. One, eight, yes, one eight seven top pool one eight seven yes. IPFS TT. Oh, because there's another, to... there's another team that is top pool. Um, oh, okay. Which is uh, number one fifty. So I think that was where there was some confusion. Um, okay. Okay, you, you can call us uh, uh, IPFS TT, IPFS TT, sorry. Yeah, which is... Um, 187. Yeah, originally, this is, let's make sure we're talking about the same thing. The Here's the link to the initial allocator application, 1006 IPFS TT. I just want to make sure we're talking yeah. about the same one. Yeah, yeah, IPFS TT, yes. Cool, yes, that one, yeah, um, yeah. that refill request is uh, one of the next ones um, to get addressed. It, there was a, you know, this is hot off the presses. Three hours ago, I think the um, watchdog posted some uh, more investigation and some questions. Uh, there's, you know, I, this allocator pathway, I think, has had 30, five PIBs of data caps. This is, I think, the largest allocator pathway so far. Um, so mm -hmm. a lot to investigate. We appreciate you know, all the information that's being provided. Um, and it's great when there are links, uh, like the comment that was made like four days ago has like links to the different, um, you know, specific examples. All of that is very helpful. So again, uh, for other allocators watching this, like this is the kind of thing that helps us, especially as these get larger and larger and take more time. Um, you know, providing screenshots, links, evidence, um, all those things are really helpful. So we'll be reviewing this one. Um, the watchdog left some questions uh, around some of the examples. So looking forward to working on that one. Thank you. Thanks for coming and presenting. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you very much. Open forum. Anything else top of mind? All right. Well, thank you so much. Next call will be taking place at 1900 Pacific, 02 UTC. 
the next call will be a very spooky pre-Halloween call on October 29th. All right, everyone. Thanks for your time as always. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. You guys have a warm and wonderful day. Cheers. Well, friendly hellos. Welcome back. This is the second iteration of the Allocator Call taking place with the Filecoin program on October 15th. High level. This is what the call emulates from the first morning call. First, kicking off the FDS, the Filecoin Developer Summit. It's taking place November 6th through 9th, Bangkok. The Phil Plus session is going to be November 7th. We'll talk about that. The second thing is we're sunsetting allocators that haven't been participating. Making sure that we're here for any questions that can impact you. And if you're on the list, see what we can do to help you out. The next is new allocator applications. Anybody who's applied to the program in the last 14 weeks, we've gone through your application. We have some questions. We have some clarifications. We'll talk about it, answer any questions you may have. And we'll end the call with just making sure that data cap refresh that's just going out right now is hitting and everybody has what they need. We have a small call tonight. So hello to you, Ken, Max, Lindy, Mai, you may, Ethan, anything you guys want, literally, this is going to be the same call as the morning. So I'd be more than happy if you want to dive into literally anything, just let me know. All right. Cheers. This call is taking place October 15th. Next call is in two weeks. After that two week period, we go crazy, crazy with holidays. First, we have the US holidays. That's why Thanksgiving is adjusted at the end of Thanksgiving, November. Then we have Christmas coming up in the US that's modified with December. So you'll see these dates, the 12th, the 3rd, the 7th. They're updated in the allocator governance calendar, just in case you make your own, these dates shift. After the session on the 12th, everything shifts. From there, we'll ask your feedback on the 2025, making sure we're respectful of holidays, but just the takeaway, next call is October 29th. Let's look at metrics. So we pull this up every two weeks. The purpose of this is so we can see how the program is changing, staying in line, the TLDR, very baseline. We've had 23 new clients served. That resulted in 40 through six petabytes of data for 63 active allocators. So those of you that are making those distributions, thank you. We appreciate it. Whatever we can do to support. All right. Good time. So Phil Bangkok. Hey, I don't know if anyone's planning on going. If you are, I would love, love to talk to you. So in addition to everything taking place on a full afternoon on the 7th, November 7th, from 1530 to 1800, Everything Filecoin Plus. In the past, we've done these talks. They've been more of a talk where you got some person at a podium. They're talking. You're listening. The point of these ones is meant to be workshops. So feedback, collaborative, very iterative as we go forward. The four topics that are up are the state of the Phil Plus program. What can we do to make it better? What's working? What's not? What should we tear down? What should we build up in next year? Highlight on allocator spotlights. If you're going, this is why I'd be keen to know. I would love, 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 love to just show you off to the world. Just let me know you're going to be there. I will invite everybody that I can fit in a room. We'll just hear about your pathway, what's working for your org. Just say thanks. The other topics are macroeconomics. If you haven't heard, this is all about incentives. Do we run this on testnet? Do we run this on mainnet? Is it 10x? Does the numbers multiply or change? Everything that takes place in that conversation is the macroeconomics. And last is pathway iteration. What can we do to help you if you wanted to build a market or an automated pathway? What's working with manual? What could be better? So again, all of these sessions are designed to help you as much as possible, onboard as much data as possible so everybody is happy and has their storage needs taken care of. If you're going to come to this, man, oh, man, reach out to me. I'm just going to roll out the red carpet to you. Just let me know if you'll be there. All right.
Alligator activity. So on the last call, we talked a lot about sunsetting alligators. So not to rehash too much, but essentially why we're doing this. Number one, if 10 alligators are sitting on five petabytes and they're not doing anything with it, it's a risk. And it's a, it's a risk that goes out. So sunsetting those allocators that haven't shown themselves to be providing to the program, make sure that the allocations are in the right place. Number two is we have a new website, build.org.com backslash Bill Plus. With this, everyone who is a client can now search for allocators. We'll talk more about this on the call. If they're searching for allocators that aren't making any distributions, not very helpful. So we wanna make sure that we've only got allocators on here. That if someone reaches out, you'll respond. So with that, back in Q2 in June, we removed seven allocators that had made no distributions and had no comms. Love it, love to have them back whenever they're ready, but we can't have that data cap just sitting out there for our organizations to hit. We're doing the same thing again. If you look at this slide, there's 63 active allocators out of a pool of 84. So we have around 21 allocators as we've been taking them off that just really aren't ready to make those deal distributions. So with that, what we did was we went through every deal that was made in the last year. Anybody who not made a deal, we reached out and said, hey, would you like to stay in the program? Or is this just a good fit to transition you off? Anybody who wants to stay in the program, love it, love to have you. All you had to do was either start making deals with clients or other allocators, or if you're an automated or market pathway, let us know what's going on with your development. When will that pathway be live? So thank you so much. If your name was on this list and it is not highlighted, that means that you've either started deals you echoed back to the ticket that you're planning to start deals, or you sent a DM. We're getting this all set up. Again, the goal of this is that when someone comes to the website and looks for an allocator, they find somebody. So again, this isn't meant to remove anybody who wants to be here, just anybody who might have moved on, just clearing it out. So if you're on this list, SSD Miner, Tech Greedy, File Drive, Tianji, Coin, see on the call, Mine, Lighthouse, Twin Quasar, Store Swift. You guys are good to go. We had issues with ledgers. We had issues with web, like bookkeeping. Autumn all fixed. We're here for whatever you need. Everybody who's on this list is all set. No further actions. Anybody who's on this list, we need something from you. So Nebula, we sunsetted your other pathway, manual. This one's your auto. We haven't heard back. We haven't seen anything. This one's scheduled to be sunset. Picnic, Web3, New Web Group. You guys have great reputations. Love to have you in the program. If things have changed, if you're doing something else, whatever we could do to help get you back, let me know. Otherwise, if we don't hear back from you by next Monday, what we're going to do is sunset your data cap anytime, anytime you want to come back. It's waiting for you. Just file the application, we'll process it, and set up. So just leave a comment in the issue saying you want to remain active. Tell us when you'll be brokering deals, when your tool will be set up, get that all fixed. And here's the issue. It was 180. It's open right now. Everybody who's relevant should be tagged in that issues. On October 22nd, anyone we have not heard from by that time, we will respectfully put you in the alumni camp. Come back anytime but we'll sunset any data cap issued. We'll keep you in the allocator channel. Whatever works, we'll get you set up. So I'll pause and see if anyone here on chat live has any questions about that. Anything I do to dive in in more detail. Hi, hi Kevin. Yeah, Lenny Mai. Hey. Hello. What can I do for you? Bud? Hey, I'm uh, representing Lemmy. So actually, uh, we actually had a application which uh, we actually uh, allocated previously. So actually, I sent a link. Uh, actually, we uh we open up a uh, issue, and then uh, actually previously we have uh some 
uh, mistakes during the transition because previously we are a V-Ball notary. So now uh, then we transited to the V-5 notary. So uh, our team wasn't that familiar with the new allocator tax system. So we actually have some lack of understanding that uh, we actually have some mistaken allocation of the 1PP to, instead of the 512T uh, tip. So I think uh, we have some mistakes and then uh, so actually we have been uh, banned and uh, we, we actually have retrained our team to familiarize with the new allocator system. So we wish to uh, hopefully still be uh, working with the Falcon community and then we also will uh, adhere to the requirements of the network. Uh, so we, we wish to, uh, we actually open up a GitHub issue lab. Then we wish to request a chance to uh, participate again in the Falcon network. Yeah, so uh, hopefully the team can actually review our our issue, and then uh, we will we'll, we'll go from there. I love it. I love everything about this. If it's okay with you, may I have your permission? Yeah. What I'll do is I'll keep this tab open on my slides that I'm sharing. When we get to the end of the call. I'll dive into this in detail, whatever okay, questions sure. I can answer, whatever I can help you, and we'll get you all set up. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Oh, Thank you. Love it. And thanks for coming, Matt. We'll get you all set up, whatever we could do. All right. This next portion is for anybody that's turned in an application. So whether you're here on the call or if you're watching or just looking at slides or just feeling the vibes, we got 27 applications from organizations that wish to become allocators. Of those, you can see the breakdown. We had five automated for GitHub, social, client staking, proof of payment, pathways. So what we've been doing over the last few weeks is just collecting and looking. That way we had a baseline of who's trying to come back on. So what we did was we started not scoring these or not looking at these from a standpoint, but just what can we do to provide feedback to these organizations? So this next part goes out to anybody who's turning an application to come on as an allocator. Right now, we had about 10 applications for manual. So Annie study block all the way down to x -Man team have applied to join doing manual reviews of every client application. The feedback that we're giving to them is that right now there are 55 existing pathways with well-established manual reviews. Some of you are on the call. Thank you. And so clients have a very thorough way to get data cap as it stands through manual pathways, which means there's not a lot of benefit for the program with raising the number of manual pathways from 55 to 85 to 300 the more pathways that we put on, the worse the program runs. There's a limitation on bandwidth. Myself, Galen, Fiddle, Watchdog, root key holders, everybody in this has a part to play. And so as we onboard more and more, it makes it more challenging. So that said, we want to make sure that anybody who's coming to the program as a manual allocator has a chance to bring value to the network. So what we've asked from any application that wishes to be a manual submission is that they bring a deal to the network, work with an existing allocator, bring your client who may want to onboard data and shepherd them through the existing pathway, be in the bookkeeping repo, help them with retrievals, ensure their SPs are lined up, make sure that all of the bookkeeping paperwork is filled out, and once your name is on that, in each one of the applications that was filed, you'll see I left a comment. And it's like, please do this, show us that you're serious, and give us these three things. So what we're looking for is the client ID, spark retrieval of the deal, the verification and SPs. And essentially, if you bring a client and they meet all the requirements of your application, you're do doing a good job of demonstrating the value that you'll bring to the network. So again, anybody who's applying as a manual pathway, this is what we're asking. And the reason why is again, we have 55 manual pathways. So the request has gone out as of April that we're trying to expand the program. Manual pathways are in abundance of selection. 
can we have an RFA? So these are requests for allocators that are doing something different. And we got around 20 applications for GitHub base, for WeChat, for socials, fill in the blank. Here's what we found with the market and automated applications that have come in. The majority of these are essentially making a market-based approach in their application. But everything that they describe is a manual allocator. What I mean by that is if you're building tooling that's automated, you should not need a person to review every question. You should not need a manual review of the KYC. You should not need a manual trigger. You should not need a manual diligence follow-up. It's a manual process. So a lot of the feedback left for these man, excuse me, automated applications was what is the automation in this? What are we seeing that's an automated tooling? That really bodes into these. So Fun Club, Lab Storage, TimeQuant, CMA, Rib Tower, love it. Love to have you come on board with this automated pathway. Please tell us what this pathway is doing. A lot of the answers we got is in this screenshot that you see at the bottom. And this is no detail. It's contribution of the ecosystem, data stewardship, cultivate, provide high quality data sets. This is, you know, frankly, just like a blanket answer. If you're listing out what your automated pathway is, it should have a link where we can test it. There should be an MVP, a minimum viable product, where we can see how this works and see how it runs and see how this can be swept across the ecosystem. If you're filling out an application for an automated pathway and all of the fields require manual diligence, that's a manual allocator. That's not a problem, but maybe we focus your attention on a manual application, bringing clients, why you develop the tool. Again, the goal is when somebody comes to the website, a client, and tries to connect, is your pathway ready to go? So a lot of these applications, they're great ideas. They're all set, but there's not a lot of engineering. So I've left comments for all of you. Please come back to me, ask questions. What can I do to help you? And we'll get you set. Same thing with market. If you're building a market, you should have a website, you should have a financial plan that's spelled out, and this should be at least in a minimum viable product. If not, then I've left you feedback on each one of these applications. Talk about your monetization. Can I track it on-chain to see what the prices are? If off-chain, how does that work? How does the diligence check? One of the big things that we've seen here is that in these descriptions of these applications, they have to be held to a standard where if in three months, somebody comes back and said this allocator was fraudulent, we need to be able to say how specifically was that a problem? How can we audit them, help with them? So here are four questions, five questions that every new application should address. For allocator description, there should be a wealth of information, a topic sentence on a business plan. If you're an automated, a market, a GitHub retrieval, it should describe in clear detail how that process works. It should have websites. It should have proof of concepts. It should tell us if we just give you this data cap today, how will you run tomorrow? How will the diligence? This is a big one. If you're an RFA, the diligence shouldn't just be manual. That's a manual pathway. And if that's the case, then what do we need to get your tooling in a place where it's ready for that? If you're relying on just looking at applications, how does this help new clients? Because there's 55 other applications that they could bring to. So what does this one do special that would help the community? I see a lot of this one. It's third party for the KYC check. If you were given the data cap today and you're running tomorrow, what KYC system are you using? For some of these applications that say third party, list it out. Is it Toggle? Is it Synapse? Is it a combination of GitHub that's checked by a bot? Whatever it may be, but when an application just says third party software, 
what this says is if we ask for the audit logs of that software, we don't even know what the software is. So spelling that out is going to be key to having a new application come on board. Monetization and fees. This is big. Will it be tracked on-chain, off-chain? Do all clients have the same data? There's a lot of questions that come from this. So essentially at the very bare minimum, if you are running a market-based and this says none, it's a very clear indication that this market is not set up. It's not ready to run because there should be a fee structure. If there's any questions on, I don't want to provide this information on fees or it changes based off fiat versus crypto, that is totally, totally fine. The more details that you put in the application, the better. And again, the goal is that once you receive the data cap, you can operate tomorrow, not in two years. And then last, again, this is coming back. So many of these applications said that they're automated. So many of these said that they're market-based. But if all of the diligence checks are just a manual review, well, then that's a manual allocator. And that's great. And we'd love to have those. We have 55 of them right now. But it might be best to work on the tooling. And when the tooling is ready, then please bring it and we'll onboard that pathway. So I'll pause, see if there's any questions in chat, and then we go on to the data cap refresh. Too smooth, too smooth. This might hit a few of you guys on the call, so I'll go really quick. Two weeks ago, we approved all of the round five that went out. So if you see your name on this list, you got your top off with the root key holder about two weeks ago. And right now, today and late night tomorrow, Galen went through and he updated all of these applications that you see from 148 up to 174. These should now be transferring from diligence to root key holder. One of the nice things is that this community is built on trust. So as you're in the ecosystem, as you onboard data, your data cap distributions will get higher and higher so that hopefully this two-week process goes over to one month, two months, and then quarterly, and then hopefully annually. So as we see this go forward, we'll make it as fast as possible. So thanks for your patience. I know that this is painful, and I appreciate all the love and support as we've worked on tooling to get this set up. And we'll talk about it on this call and how we've got some ideas for how to make this even faster as we go. All right, here it is. Here's that thing. So right now, you have a template in the registry for bookkeeping change, for anything that you wanted to request for support. But we have not had a template for the data cap refresh, frankly, because we didn't know which information was the best to gather. Starting tomorrow, you will see in the Allenator governance an issue that you can create to request data cap. Pros and cons. Pro is this will eliminate the need for the watchdog account to list and verify a lot of links because you as a requester will provide that. Pro, you won't have to wait three days for watchdog, a day for you, three days for governance, a day for you, three days for root key holder. This adds up. It adds up quick. If all of this can be collected up front. It will take more time to fill out the form, but it will save you days waiting for this whole process to run through. So when you log in to the governance repo tomorrow, you will start to see a new issue for requesting data cap. Essentially, you'll list, here were my bookkeeping repos, here were my distributions, here were my clients, here were my retrievals, here was the metrics that I set out, and did I make it or did I not make it? And if you did not make it, you will self-select why and what you will do to improve. And the goal is that rather than having to have a back and forth that takes days to communicate over GitHub, all of this information is collected up front and it saves you countless hours of waiting and seeing and you get that data cap faster. Love, 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 love to get your feedback. Does this take too long? Is there fields that don't work? Just send it over to me. I'll be the one that's Iterating on this, I'll just put in whatever you want. So just let me know, and I'll be happy to get you set. I've had this slide for the last two weeks, but I just keep it just so you see it. These are the four most common things that we hit with an application refresh. It's that there's no compliance from the clients. If your clients is doing something silly, you see it, flag it, 
all the best. Duplicate applications, if you have two pathways, please, 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 don't fill a client from your automated pathway, then your manual, and then turn in the same request. Such a red flag, such a quick one. The SP locations of VPN, it's okay. Just please make sure you're disclosing that. And that applications have missing fields. So many times we did a review, we would look at the client's application and it was filled out with a crayon from somebody very, very fast. Make sure if they're missing fields that you check that box. It's your job as the allocator to look at it. It goes a long way, helps a whole lot. All right, the very last thing I want to chat about before I help any of you on this call is that they're updating the fill.org fill plus website. If you've been to this website, thank you, love it. If you haven't, what it's gonna be is set up so that if clients want to come in contact with an allocator, they can come to this website, sort all the current allocators, how much deals they've made, how long it takes to get back and pull it up. The next iteration on this is we're gonna give a bio page to every allocator that's listed. So if a client is interested in working with you, they can click on your bio, see how you do business, where you operate, what types of data, what types of questions. And hopefully as the program scales, this gets more and more and more automated to the point where we humans can just sit back and let all of these bots take care of it for us. So the bluff on this one, the TLDR, is you're going to be reached out to by a guy named Matt, works at the Filecoin Foundation, just asking if you have pictures, website, short description on your org. We'll make sure that it's featured. So with that, I'll pause and turn it over to you. Any questions, any issues, whatever you need, I'm here for you. All right, Wendy Mai, no one's beating down our door, so let's just uh, old Mother Hubbard and the wolf in the shed, do it together. All right, let's see. Let me go through chat, and Wendy Mai will get you all set up. All right, m and All right, Mr. Zhang, I see your comment in chat. came through at a 731. It was about the meta allocators. That's such a good question. I'm going to find out. I'll post in the public chat under this thread. I don't know. They said that that would be all set. We had the holiday on Monday. I haven't heard back. I will ping fiddle. And uh, Mr. Zhang, I'll post a comment in chat and let you know when that meta allocator is set to roll out. Good question. All right. We got the always wonderful fat man. Let's see what you got. For triggering allocator due diligence for refresh and allocator, just create new issue in the allocator registry repo. Hey, great question. So, that man, right now, any new allocator that wants a refresh just goes into the governance repo of GitHub and creates new issue. There's no templates. There's no templates right now. If the same allocator went into the allocator registry, and I'm going to pull these links up and show you, Right now, there's like seven templates that they could use for bookkeeping, for multi-sig changes. What I'm planning to do is tomorrow when they log into the governance, there'll be a new issue template for creating a refresh. And it will pull all the information that we need and go through it. So in 15 seconds of just screen sharing, here is the registry. And if you've been working here for a while, you come to new issues and you see that there's all of these pre-populated templates that are set up from everything from like any change of my Slack, someone left the company, to my GitHub, literally whatever it is, these are the most common ones. But if you come into the governance, there is no current issues for this. So if someone clicks a new issue, when you fill out a new request, it's completely blank. And the pros of this is that there's no bureaucracy, but the cons are that Every new organization that requests new data cap requests it in a little bit of a different way. So if we have Lendy Mai, they want it, they have their application. Lendy Mai, you guys are awesome. Thank you. They provide a lot of this. Sometimes we don't always get that information. So if we come into another app on some application, let's see, refresh here. Last review, these 
So then we have to wait for the watchdog to kind of post some things and make it public and make it community transitioned. So the goal is that we'll have one of these templates that collects everything we need. So you don't have to wait for that back and forth. So that's pretty much the goal of it all. All right, Lendy Mai, what can I do for you, my friend? What do you want to dive into? Time is yours, whatever I can help with. Oh, hi. Hi, hi, Kevin. Hello. Uh, yeah, uh, so, yeah, so uh, just now I was sharing, uh, I'm representing Lemmy. So I do, uh, we actually have been flagged out for uh, a low retrieval uh, issues and then uh, wish that uh, uh, the Falcon team can actually review our case again. Uh, so this is our uh, first time being flagged for uh, our, our this uh, uh, negligence. And then we, we actually are joining, uh, we are previously a V4 notary. So that's uh, after becoming a V5 notary, there's some changes in our team. Uh. So our team wasn't that familiar with the new allocator system. So we also uh, have a lack of understanding. So we actually have a few mistakes of uh, mistaken uh, allocation of the the, the file, uh, one PP instead of the file on two tip. So uh, we have we should have been more careful. Uh. So we apologize for our actual mistakes. And then uh, yeah, we hope that uh, Falcon can actually review our case. Yeah, so we can we can stay in the ecosystem and hopefully uh, uh contribute to the Falcon community as well. I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lindy, my first off, thanks for coming. Just shows a lot. You'll take the time to call into these and kind of go hat yeah, and hat. Sure, sure. Here's what's next steps. Here's what's next mm -hmm. steps. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is we will have either the community or the Filecoin watchdog is going to click on each one of these data applications that you've submitted. And what they're going to do is they're going to look at the distribution schedule as it related to your application. So if you said the first tranche is 512, then a PIB, then two PIBs, what they're going to do is look to see if that was adhered to. If I'm reading this, and if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying that we thought we were going to send out half a PIB, but we actually yeah. send out a full pin. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> okay. So you're doing good. You're kind of disclosing this. If I was to pull the Spark Retrieval for this, what do you think the Spark Retrieval ratings are for these? Sorry, uh, I need to get you the what? Spark Retrieval rating. Yeah, so if I was to pull up the Spark Retrieval, so essentially Spark is living on a dashboard here. Let's see, all my questions are. Right. So essentially what Spark is, is the retrieval that we pulled back. There's a repo, we have lots of questions in the Slack mm -hmm. as it goes forward. Okay. But essentially what we want to see is that were these deals retrievable? So have you looked, it looks like you have the compliance reports. So yeah, the, our, low, our retrieval is quite low, it's, uh, yeah, it's 0 0.47%. Yeah, so here would be my feedback. It's mm -hmm. when we look at this, what we're asking is, can we trust Lindy Mai? Are you guys good stewards of the program or are you just looking out for yourself? That's pretty much how it boils down. So right now, it's less than 1%. We went to two clients and four petabytes went out the door in three allocations. So one, two, three. So you did a good job kind of spelling it out. I think the next thing is, is that the watchdog will leave this comment kind of saying, hey, we've got really low retrieval. Hey, all this data went out. I think one thing you could do to help yourself is in the comments, if I was you, what I would write is something along the effect of, we learned a lot this round. Next time we will have, you know, let's just say X percentage of Spark retrieval. Okay. 
what is that? Is it going to be 50%? Is it going to be 60%? And then an allocation tranche. This should match your application. So if you told me that every client will get 512, then one, then two, does it match? If not, why? But you should spell out if given the chance to kind of reallocate data, what will you do differently? Because what will happen is if this comes up in the future, right now it sounds like this is your first one. If this happens again, then you've kind of demonstrated that LendingMy is unable to kind of meet their application, the, the guidelines that you spelled out. So the more details of what you will do differently and how you will improve will help you tremendously. If you have questions, feel free. You could send me a DM in Slack. Hey, Kevin, this is what I'm thinking about putting. I'll give you feedback. I'll give you comments on the record, off the record, whatever I could do to help. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll get back to my team and then yeah, we we'll, I think a good percentage should be around ten percent. Uh, we we'll, we can promise to do it uh, in the next round. Yeah, I'll I'll leave it in the I'll leave the comments in the the issue and then I'll ask for your feedback. Uh, once again. That sounds great. Okay, One other yeah. recommendation is a lot of the Phil Plus ecosystem is built on trust, and it's built on reputation. Leave a comment like, I came to the 15 October call. Okay. Thanks for the feedback. Learned these things. Anything like this, what we're looking for is we don't just want nameless faces that are not abiding. Obviously, we want people that will take the time like you have to call in to see what they could do to improve it to help the network, to help the SPs, to help the clients. We're all in this together. So leave that in the issue. It goes a real long way. Okay, sure, yeah. Put a face or voice behind the comment. Uh. Okay, got it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're willing to attend all the calls also to uh, show our participation. All right, let me know if you have any other questions okay. here for whatever you can do. All right, question in chat. Max, I thought we got you guys all squared. Max, you still having issues with this. Oh, no. All right, so Max, five days ago, we got this through. And what do we have here? JSON's updated. Oh, you have no data cap on that new JSON. Oh, the worries, the worries. All right, let's just staple that new ledger to your, your hip, and we'll get you all set. Okay, Max, is this impacting you and Coin Summer Lab? Let's see. So it's both of you guys. Max, if you're hearing me, can you put in chat or in this issue? Is both Coin Summer and Miner having the same thing? I'm going to look this up and I'll get back to it on the call. I'm going to send this with the. I'm going to give you a smile. <laughs> you have followed up with this. All right. Max, I'm going to P0 this for tomorrow. I have to sit down with the root key holders. So since we have your JSON updated, since I've got your multi-sig pointed at it, I think what I have to do is get a root key holder, which is not me, to go back, yank the data cap off your L1, and then transfer it to this new multi-sig that we had to set. Appreciate you coming. Appreciate you flag this. I'm adding this to my whiteboard behind me. And then got this top of mind. So Max, I'm going to get that for you and Coin Summer. And then we'll get that multi-sig behind you and just off to sunshine and rainbows as we go forward. Thanks for letting me know. All right. We'll make one more call. I'll let you guys go enjoy your wonderful... Wednesday here. All right. My last alibi is if you were coming to FDS Bangkok, man, let me roll out the red carpet. Send me a DM. Let me know you're coming. I'd love to uh, set you up with uh, dinners, with events, have you speak. If not, no worries. We'll put it on YouTube. And we'll all watch it like the friends we are. 
Otherwise, thanks again for all your time. Thanks for coming to the call. If you need anything else, let me know in Slack, the Allocators channel, and I'll post this recording there as well. All the best, everyone. Cheers.